Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 18. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at triggers and we're also going to take a look at implementing a gun, at least for our character to hold, you know, kind of pick up and that's where the trigger is going to kind of collaborate with that aspect. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and indeed everything else on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So as it stands now, the city itself is a little bit bland because it's just this one block and I'm hoping you guys have started building up your city a little bit more than just whatever this is and hoping you've taken the time to create everything. So to get things in order ready for future development when we do like things like cars and NPCs and stuff, uh, I'm just going to quickly duplicate this block a couple of times to give ourselves a little city. Uh, so I want to get rid of that one. And the whole thing comes in this, so I'm just going to hold control, press D to duplicate. Obviously you wouldn't really do this, you'll take the time to actually build the game up uh, yourself, rather than do everything I'm doing. Uh, let's just make sure I'm getting everything in place here. So it's street and builds, isn't it? That should be everything together. Yes, perfect. So <laughs> let's duplicate that, bring it out uh, to there. Let's do it again, bring it this way, probably to about there. And let's just make sure everything is aligned, at least somewhat sensibly, around here. I think uh, the shop faces haven't come across as well, but that's, that's not a problem. We can easily bring that across as well. Uh, so let's duplicate this, bring it to... Is it in line there? I think it's almost in line. We can bring it down here. Align that way. So I'm taking more time than I would like in this tutorial right now, I think. Okay, so that looks relatively okay. Obviously, you take as much time as you need to develop your city. Now, while I quickly do this and bring these shops over, I'm going to talk about what we're going to do with triggers. So the idea of a trigger is basically we can allow our player to walk into that trigger and it will perform a certain action, whether it be pick something up, whether it be put something down or activate a sequence or anything. So triggers are quite useful in almost all aspects of Unity and all aspects of development. So no doubt this will not be the last time we will be using a trigger. Uh, like I said, specifically, you can get it to trigger sequences. So we'll probably be doing it when we create a story. So we're starting to get some kind of city in place now. So let's build that uh, trigger up. And like I said, we're going to do it with a gun. So in order for all this to work, if you're using the same model I am, this guy right here, if we click him and go to the rig, and go to the spine, spine again, spine again, and I think should be in the left arm. He should have a placement for what would be a pistol right there. And if we actually go to the top here in the hierarchy and type pistol, you'll see we do actually have them there. So if we uh, head to this option right here, if I go to the right one. So pistol left, so we can either choose left or right. In fact, do you know what? We'll go with right. I think most people are right-handed, aren't they, in this world? So we'll go with right. The best way we can do this now is make sure we are on the right object, the pistol, right, or if you want left, of course. And we need to go to where our guy is in the assets. So down here, and let me see, I think it's in weapons and yes, we've got a gun there. So what we would do is drag that onto there and it will give him the gun. It looks a little bit off place now. We may need to modify it, which won't take too much time. I think it may just be a simple uh, rotation, but let's see how he looks while he's holding his gun. So just give a second for this to pan out. We may turn this little sequence off to kind of speed up any um, testing. So here's gun. Oh, of course. Do you know what I've really just realized? We put his gun 
on the wrong one. Because if you think about it, the way this actually pans out, the say what, well, let's undo what we've done. The um, actual model we're using is turned off right now, isn't it? So we need to put it on this model here. So let's type in pistol again, and it's going to be the one that's turned off because we actually, the one, this model that's on now, we turn him off eventually anyway, don't we? So let's put our silenced pistol back in his hand. And for testing purposes, I am going to turn him back on. And the silenced pistol will rotate on the X by 90 degrees. So you can see now his pistol is actually in the correct position. And we now need to turn that off. So we've got the pistol on his hand in the correct position. We just need to turn it off now. It'll all make sense in a couple of minutes time when we build everything together. So it's in position. Let's turn our actual player off again because he turns itself on again. And let's create a trigger somewhere else for us to pick up the gun. So let's have it maybe here. So the way we're going to do this is we are going to have a cube which is going to act as the trigger, and that cube is also going to contain a fake weapon. So, to get this working correctly, let's go to Game Object, let's go to 3D Object and Cube, and let's bring this cube into position where we would want it to be. So I'm going to do something a little bit relative to Grand Theft Auto in this case, you know, where the weapon is just kind of hovering above the floor and rotating. You guys have seen it before. Uh, so the cube, right-click, and rename and let's call this pistol trigger and turn off the mesh renderer and also down here make sure we tick is trigger this allows us to actually pick up that weapon so now the pistol drag and drop it into that pistol trigger probably need to increase the size of it because it does appear to be quite small there we go so now let's actually create a neat, neat little way of rotating it rather than use uh, animation. So let's create a C-sharp script which we can control a little bit better than animation. So let's head to our scripts folder. Let's create a separate folder and we'll call this general. So this folder is going to contain a lot of general random scripts which can be used in all kinds of different places, situations and scenarios. Uh, so right click create C sharp script and we'll call this rotation um let's just call it rotation obj short for object and let's open that up in visual studio so this is going to be one of two scripts that we'll create within this tutorial both of these scripts are going to be attached to that cube so i'm going to do everything we need to do before we actually play test this just so we don't kind of waste any time here. And all we really need to do with this script is get rid of void start and the annotations. And let's declare a variable that we can control at any point. Uh, let's have public integer or int as it were. And we'll have this as rotate speed semicolon. And all we need to have in void update is transform dot rotate that's capital r and in brackets zero because we're not rotating on x and then we have rotate speed because we're rotating on the y and then zero again because we're not rotating on the x by all means you can do if you want to comma space dot world the reason we have space dot world is to make this uh, entire script and the rotation relative to the world around it semicolon and finally, let's set rotate speed equal to one, just for now, and save that script. Head back to Unity. Uh, when the script is compiled, all we need to do is just drag and drop it onto pistol trigger. So, drag and drop. And if we click it, we'll see rotate speed is one. You may need to speed it up, you may need to slow it down. It's entirely up to you. So in preparation for the next script, we're going to have a little sound effect where we pick the gun up. So let's go to our sound effects folder and bring in this gun pickup sound, which you can get on the website. Link is in the description below. Head over there, 
downloads and assets, Grand Theft Auto series, and tutorial number 18, and it's there for free for you to download. So let's prepare to get this collected. Now we already have this cube set as trigger because we ticked it there. So it's already set within Unity. We just need to create that C Sharp script that will allow us to pick it up. So let's head back to our script folder, which is down here. And let's create another folder to keep everything neat and tidy and call this one weapons. So everything we do with weapons is going to be inside this folder. So right click, create and C sharp script. And let's call this gun pickup. And let's open it up in Visual Studio. So this one's going to be a little bit more complicated than the last one. Uh, we're going to be using the on trigger enter method for this one, but we also need to declare just a couple of variables. So I'm going to get rid of void start and void update and all annotations. So the variables we're going to need is the gun that we have hold of, as well as the actual sound that we've just imported. Now that's in its basic form. So ultimately, we could go a little bit further, but it's not really necessary. We don't want to overcomplicate things. So let's get the mechanics in place. And then by all means, you can run with this and just go mad and create all kinds of different cool things using this simple mechanic. So public game object, we'll call it our pistol, semicolon, and then public audio source, and let's call it gun pickup semicolon. So like I said, we're going to do this with void on trigger enter. It doesn't need to be private, so we can get rid of that. And in here, what we need to do is have gun pickup dot play, open close bracket, semicolon. And then we need to have our pistol dot set active and in brackets true. And finally, we actually need to turn this object off because we don't want to be able to constantly keep having to pick up the gun, obviously unless we respawn or anything. But the respawning is something we'll get around to and how we can regenerate things later on in the series. Uh, but for now, all we need to do is turn off this particular object because we've already picked the gun up. So it's this dot game object, and that's a lowercase g, remember, uh, remember there, sorry, can't get my words out. Uh, this dot game object dot set active false, semicolon, and save. Triggers really are this easy to create. And you can think about this in a logical way. If this was one where you would trigger a storyline, which is perfectly what we're going to do pretty soon anyway, we would have the story in here, maybe with a co-routine and all kinds of stuff. It really is all about just that void on trigger enter, the on trigger enter method. So let's head back into Unity and let the script compile for just a second. So now let's attach that gun pickup script to our pistol trigger. And we just need to set those two game objects. Now, the first one is going to be something inside our guy, which is there. That silenced pistol, so drag and drop that. The second one we need to put on the character itself. So if we close that up there and on sound, effects, let's take that footstep two, hold control, press D to duplicate it, and let's F2 and call this gun pickup. And then we just need to add the effect sound that we brought in a couple of minutes ago. So where I've lost it, gun pickup, there we are. So drag and drop over here into the inspector panel on the component. So that is now set. So off we go back to our pistol trigger and add in that sound effect to there. So logically, we should be able to see this gun rotating quite nicely when we start and we should be able to pick it up and the gun will appear in our hand. So I'm gonna save my scene there. And then let's try this out. So let's press play and see if everything works. So yeah, we've got all this. This is fine. Perfect. Hopefully you guys have refined this a little bit more at this point and you've got a nice cool little intro scene and all that. 
So we don't have the gun, but we can see our gun rotating just there. Now it's not quite rotating how we would like, it's kind of rotating on the handle of the gun, but that's not to worry. So just to show you our, how rotation works, let's change the rotation to two. You see it rotating faster, 20. Yeah, that, that's crazy. So rotation speed is entirely up to you. I think five might be a nice rotation, maybe four. Four would be a nice rotation speed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have that as four here. And I'm going to move the pistol to be a little bit more center of that cube. So let's move it probably about there. So now we all have that all perfected. So let's go over, check out its new rotation, check out the rotation axis and pick up the weapon. This should be a lot of fun, I hope. It's amazing how just the little things can, uh, can really impress you guys. You'll be amazed. So let's head over there. And let's pick up our gun. There we are. So now he has hold of the gun. So obviously there's a lot more to this rather than just pick up the gun. There's so much more that we can do and that we will do. Um, I, I think the next step is to really get our city to come alive. So what we're going to do next tutorial is we're going to start looking at NPCs. We're going to take some time to have some NPC development because once we get more people in our world it starts getting a bit more fun so guys until that next tutorial what i would recommend you do is build up your city rather than just do what i did at the beginning of this tutorial build it up build a nice city and then be ready for making our city come alive in the coming tutorials guys thank you very much for watching